My grandfather really instilled in us, it's okay to be proud to be Chicano. It's an honor to wear working clothes. It's an honor to be a working class person, that there's no shame in that. Right now, there's the term Latinx that gets to do. And, and I understand people like to use it. When I refer to myself, I don't refer to myself as Latino. I refer to myself as Chicano because that's how I identify. And I think that that's something that my grandfather really instilled in us. I think the way he tried to instill the proudness of, of when we look at ourselves in the mirror was in terms like Chicano power. My grandfather's work was very much about social justice and environmental justice. And in many regards, environmental justice became social justice with his work. My grandfather was absolutely a true believer in that we're all connected. He grew a lot of things that uh, you could drink. He was, he was a product of, um, <laughs> of the depression, so he was very cheap and very, very much about how we could save money all the time. He grew things like watermelon, things you could make agua fresca with. So watermelon, uh, cantaloupe, we could help him, the whale barrels and all of this. And I always thought, wow, he just wanted us to help, you know, he was an old man, wanted us to help. But the more I reflect on it, the more I learned about him as a person and his life, uh, the more I believe that that was a way for us always to remember where we came from. That while he may be a civil rights leader, he may be an icon of the labor movement, that he was a farm worker. And there's nothing wrong with being a farm worker. Chicano Latinx Latinx Before he was any of that, he was an amazing, amazing uh, family person. While he may have had, you know, challenges because he was on the road a lot, the love and compassion was always there. One of the things I remember most about him is he always made it home for Christmas Eve. Midnight Mass, no matter where he was, no matter what was happening, he may take off Christmas the day after, but he always made it home for Midnight Mass with my nana. And, and those were the types of things because that was our culture. He instilled that in us that as proud brown Catholics, that it was okay to honor your faith. It was okay to march with the Virgen de Guadalupe. It was okay to, to say a prayer before every meeting, before every march. I think that's how he made us proud of, of our identities in that we will always, will always be brown no matter what happens. I don't know if I've ever said I'm carrying my grandfather's legacy. You know, he is the Michael Jordan and I'm, you know, little Bow Wow in, in, and I want to be like Mike. I try to advocate for the oppressed, not an individual, just an individual issue. And I try to do it all nonviolently. And I think that in those regards, my grandfather's legacy and his work was put into me, like a seed. I would just wanted to know that I kept working hard I fought for as many communities as I could, as often as I could. And that instead of naming streets after me or buildings or even a holiday, just vote and make laws that backed my values. You know, save all that of, we're naming a street we wanna honor you. Honor me by supporting what I did. Honor me by, by passing the, uh, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. Honor me by, by, by making sure that we have a pathway to citizenship. Honor me by making sure that we have free housing for all. Honor me with those types of things. That's how I want to be remembered. As a guy that would rather you just shut up or really do something to honor me.